Welcome back to the Forza Horizon 5 Rally Series, everybody. Today we're going to be building the International Scout 800. <laughs> This is one of my favorite vehicles of all time, the International Scout 800. It's just a really, really cool little off-road vehicle. And this thing is an insane rally car. I've built this thing for online racing, and it is absolutely amazing. So I thought we'd use it for the rally series today, see what kind of lap time it can put down. I'm not expecting this thing to be right up the leaderboard, but I'm hoping it will at least be in the top 10. So let's go ahead and build this thing to S1 class. If this is the first episode of the series you've seen, all the vehicles in the series are built to S1 class. Now I know for the Scout we're going to go ahead and engine swap this thing. So it starts off with 193 horsepower from the standard V8. Um, I'm not actually sure who builds the V8 for the International, whether it's their own engine or whether it's like a Ford engine. Um, I'm not sure. But we're going to go ahead and put in the Racing V8. That's going to take us up to 850 horsepower. All the vehicles have to keep their standard drivetrain. So this thing is all-wheel drive already, which is fantastic. We will come back to supercharging if we need it. Um, we can fit whatever aero parts we want to this thing, but of course they do add weight, so we don't want to go too crazy. Um, and most of these are designed to make this thing off-road. Uh, sorry, like roady with like big splitters and spoilers and things, which just lower our ground clearance and make this thing handle worse off-road so uh we might go ahead and put some fog lights on that looks pretty cool uh we can go ahead and put a roof spoiler or we can actually remove the roof which will remove quite a lot of weight um but i think the thing looks better with the back on it so we're just going to leave that how it is and of course we can go ahead and remove the spare wheel but it does look a bit odd with that as well so we're going to leave that on now, all the vehicles are fitted with the Rally Tire Compound, now known as the Off-Road Tire Compound. And we're going to make those as wide as we possibly can. Um, we haven't been upgrading the wheels on any of the vehicles. We've just been leaving the standard wheels, so I'm going to do that. Now, this vehicle, we can actually increase the um, size of the sidewall. I'm just going to go ahead and upgrade it one size. Um, that's going to soak up some of the bumps a little bit better. We saw with the Chevy K10 that increasing the sidewall did give the thing a much better ride. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Uh, then we're going to go ahead and upgrade all the drivetrain. We're almost up to S1 class already. We're going to fit this thing with the race transmission carbon fiber drive shaft and the rally differential then we're going to fit this thing with some better brakes because it has the standard international brakes from the 1970s which are not fantastic i think this thing might even have drum brake standard so we're going to fit it with some discs we can go ahead and put off-road springs and dampers on and that does lift it very very slightly now we saw in the last episode with the Mercedes 6x6, we rolled it over a couple of times. We don't want too much height in this thing, um, but that is why I've gone for the thicker um, sidewall profile. We can go ahead and reduce some weight in this thing. Um, it's just over a ton, so it's about a ton and a quarter, which is not terrible. That's pretty decent actually. Um, what I might actually do with this thing, oh we can't anyway, I was going to say is make the um, make the ax axle width a little bit wider, but we can't actually do that with this thing. Um, but we can go ahead and upgrade the engine. We already have 850 horsepower, so in fact I'm going to leave that alone. I think that's going to be more than enough to get this thing around the course 
and set a decent time the more horsepower you get when you start getting up to the thousand horsepower region it actually works it has the opposite effect effectively the more power you go when you get up to that level the more it just spins the tires so 850 we're just over a ton but we've got all-wheel drive i think is going to be a good amount of power for the international i'm going to go ahead and tune this thing and give it a cool race in livery and i'll see you guys at the rally course okay here we go the first pass in the international scout it's a massive improvement over the stock drive and whoa we nearly flipped it on the tarmac there this thing is a little bit floppy but that's okay i'm used to driving this thing i know what kind of performance it has it's nice to be back in a vehicle that just has four wheels and actually gets turned in for the corners it's an absolute rocket down the straights i found this really really cool livery for it actually it's kind of like an old rusty livery now, I really don't know where this thing is going to sit on the podium, but I'm going to hope that it comes somewhere near the K10, the Chevy K10 that we did um, a couple of months ago now. It's been a while since we drove that vehicle, but I have a feeling that's about where it's going to sit on the leaderboard, somewhere around the Audi Quattro, another all-wheel drive vehicle, of course the Chevy was as well. Now, concentrating on the run, we don't flip it through there like we did in the 6x6. Coming up to the hairpin, I slowed down a little bit too much there. I've biased this thing again towards rear wheel drive, so it is a little bit more oversteery, which is what we want, but it is spinning those tyres up quite a lot. I'm glad they only opted for 850 horsepower because i think anything more than that this thing would have been absolutely uncontrollable i'm doing my very best at the moment to keep this thing on the ground as much as possible but it is an absolute rocket ship it does feel very floppy but it doesn't feel like it wants to fall over it just feels like it's soaking up the bumps which is kind of what we want but it is a little bit nerve-wracking when you get the left and right hand side of the vehicles lifting up through the corners just like that but it turns in so well for the corners but we do get a little bit of a slide on some of the corners coming down the hill and across the line i think it was a 213 oh no a 212.816 for the first pass in the international that's going to put it just above the k10 already so that is a very very impressive showing um i definitely think there's some room for improvement there there's a lot of sliding in some of the corners and um i think some of the gears in some of the corners were, i was a bit too high geared coming out of some of the corners so there's definitely some room for improvement here okay let's see if we can improve on that two minute 12 second lap time here we go for round number two it's a little bit nerve-wracking on the tarmac you can see there it gets a big slide and it feels like it wants to fall over but it just doesn't quite i have actually um lowered this thing very very slightly just by a couple of inches just so it's not as top heavy and i think that's definitely helping the vehicle staying on the ground this thing's so mental with the amount of power going on the all-wheel drive and it's just sliding everywhere that it's actually difficult to remember where this thing was slow and i think the corners is most of it to be honest we're sliding a lot through the corners as you can see and in the in the last run i was a little bit high geared coming out of some of them so I'm just going to try and work on that in this run and then in the final run we're just going to work at being as smooth as possible. You can see there I was a little bit too high geared coming into the hairpin. We probably don't need to break quite as early as that for the hairpin. As soon as you get it in on a straight you can just point and squirt this thing and it absolutely takes off like a rocket. Now coming up the hill, let's see what kind of speed we actually get up the hill. 
some of the faster cars are reaching 130 up here or 120 above 120 in the international but again i'm a little bit high geared there and we've got a little bit of a jump coming out of there which has unsettled the vehicle slightly i'm just going to try my best to concentrate for a moment so if i do go quiet i apologize Get a big slide through there and another big slide through that corner. This thing loves to go sideways. It would be a great drift car, I have to admit. Coming through here, it feels like it wants to fall over all the time, but it just doesn't. Which is sort of nerve-wracking. But there we go. Across the line, it was an improvement over the previous lap time. A 210.865 is going to put this thing again higher up the leaderboard. That's actually faster than um, the Mercedes 6x6 from the last episode as well, but still just behind the Velociraptor, just three tenths of a second slower than that vehicle. So we'll see if we can beat the Velociraptor, and just in front of that, we have the Subaru 22B. I would like to beat that vehicle. Let's see what we can do. If we can get a 2 and 9 in this thing, we can actually climb three places on the leaderboard. So let's see what we do in the last run. Okay, here we go. We are off and underway for our final attempt in the International Scout. 800a it's a lot more controlled on the tarmac this time a little bit of tire squeal but that's fine as we head onto the dirt i'm going to just work on being as smooth as i possibly can in this run we're going to get it slowed down early for those couple of corners we turn in much better not as much sliding i've kept the gears a little bit higher through this section just to try and keep the vehicle in a straight line a little bit of a jump through the water splash there but that was okay i'm just gonna slow it down nicely for this corner we get a little bit of oversteer but that's okay it just helped rotate the vehicle through the corner most of the vehicles get a slide through there but it's a big slide from the international that's going to slow us down a lot down this section we're a little bit wide on the entry but that's okay the vehicle is bouncing around like crazy down here and again, I'm just a little bit too high geared. This thing is very, very difficult to get the gear in right for some reason. And a bit of understeer on the exit's gonna bash us into that tree. That's okay, we don't get any air on the jump down there, but coming up the hill now, this is where we can use all of the power of that 7.2 litre V8 engine. 850 horses pulling us up there to the top of the hill knock it down at the top and we turn in a little bit too early there but that's okay we cut the corner very very slightly the vehicle just feels like it wants to flip over and whoa we we're up on two wheels there that was quite terrifying but it didn't want to flip over again so the thing feels quite unstable but then it just doesn't quite want to go all the way unlike the result sorry not the velociraptor the mercedes in the last episode coming down the hill here are we going to see an improvement not quite it might have been a couple of tenths faster yes it was just two tenths faster than the previous run so definitely an improvement did we beat the velociraptor no we were just literally a couple of hundredths of a second slower than the Velociraptor, but let's see how it compares to some of our other vehicles. Well, there we have it. It's a 12th place for the International Scout 800A, but a fantastic, fantastic showing from that vehicle. I love the International Scout. It's one of my favorite vehicles of all time. A 210.631 puts it just literally a hundredth of a second behind the velociraptor absolutely insane but there we have it it's a brilliant brilliant little vehicle would i recommend it as a rally car a hundred percent with a little bit more tuning and maybe a little bit less horsepower this thing would be a fantastic a-class rally car 
a 12th place for the International Scout. If you did enjoy this episode, then don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you're new. We're trying to reach 2,000 subscribers. So if you want to support that goal, then please consider subscribing. And if you have any suggestions of vehicles you want to see in the next episode of the Rally Series, don't forget to comment those below. But that's going to do it for this week. We'll be back with another vehicle next week. But until then, goodbye.